UK. All across Wisconsin from Civic Media, this is Up North News Radio. Now, live from our Lake Wissota studio, here's the founding editor of Up North News, Pat Brightlow. On this Thursday, December 7th, 2023, nice to have you along. Greg Bach joins us from Waukesha, Dr. Kristen Liley from Green Bay, and uh, coming up, our hometown health segment which is about seeking a new generation of nurses. Um, it is one of the big healthcare challenges in our state. It was already daunting because of demographics. Then you throw a pandemic on top of it. And Kristen, you're gonna bring along a couple of guests that are gonna say, well, we have to do something. So here are the somethings that we're doing. Not just a couple of guests, but real leaders in nursing in our state. We've got Linda Young, who is the Dean of Nursing at Eau Claire. We've got Jill Gatormson. She's the Dean at Marquette University. They are going to talk about what we are doing to educate nurse educators, how we are supporting the people who train nurses so that we can help to solve this problem. And man, it is a crisis. Like who hasn't been touched by a nurse in their life? We, you know, when you need it the most, when you're the most vulnerable and the sickest, they are just some of the most important people in our lives, don't you think? Well, which leads to this personal story about Pat's annual physical yesterday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, oh goodbye folks. Have Here a good day, show's <laughs> over. This is just where I get to publicly thank uh, not only my doctor because she's wonderful, but the nurse who first takes the, the the patient history. And I realized that for for I talk for two hours straight in the morning, but then I'm working at home alone and maybe a meeting here and there, but there's a lot of just sitting here typing and writing. And I realized sometimes, and yesterday was an example, where I just finally get to talk to somebody. It's not really a conversation. At some point I'm saying, whoa, Pat, shut up. <laughs> so you can tell I have nobody to talk to. So I just let it all out. We're talking weather, we're talking health, we're talking, and I, I kind of sometimes look in their eyes and they go, please stop yeah. talking. I have, write, <laughs> I have to write all this down. So and then I had to ask myself, nurses. did I ever like the show Cheers? I mean, seriously, what was the deal? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and Kristen, you know, because uh, again, being married to a physician and knowing that they're dictating charts and sometimes a chart is, is relatively straightforward. And sometimes you, I, I'm sure you have to sit there, not that you, we're not going to pick on anybody in particular and go, oh, that was a long visit. <laughs> well, I know but, you're going to sugarcoat it. You're going to say every, everybody's special. Everybody's unique. <laughs> Don't tell me that there isn't one or two where you go, Oh my God, you're still talking. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I think it goes both ways. I think, you know, sometimes as a patient, you're like, um, hello, are you listening to me or are you just, just talking? Yeah. But you know, that's all part of the relationship building. You don't, it's not like getting your oil changed when you go in for a doctor visit, you're going in there to be cared for. And part of that care is knowing that you're being heard and that you have, you know, a comfortable relationship, not just with the doctor who's taking care of you, but with the whole team. Well, and that's where I will say, while I like to poke a little fun at myself, I think what I'm doing is is more right than wrong because what do we hear most about when it comes to men? They won't go see a doctor in the first place. And when they do, they want to be all tough and say, well, you know, nothing's wrong. I, I put it all out there so that it gets on the record so that if things get worse, like, you know, like we talked, it's been a while now since I mentioned, you know, a year ago, I had a really bad knee. So she asked about it and follow up and like, okay, well, you know, this and that, and you need a complete history if you're ever going to get properly treated if, and when something goes haywire. So mm -hmm. I guess the lesson is, you know, better to overshare than, than undershare, but still, I just want to express my appreciation for the people that have to take all that down. So thank you. Pat's poor medical assistant is like uh, anything else, oh, God, anything else. Yes. <laughs> well, the, since, but, since but you mentioned it, um, <laughs> But my doctor's great because then she'll she'll go through that and say, okay, well, let's try this or let's, you know, let's do this. Whether you're talking about, you know, everything from, you know, um, 
I didn't know what a probiotic is. You see the commercials all the time. And I'm just like, you know, what, what, it, what is the deal with this versus, you know, fiber versus this? You know, these are the things that, again, I love mocking my elderly adolescents, you know, but it's like, and she, I, I'm glad I got a laugh out of her when I said my, my whole life these days is what's happening to my body, you know, <laughs> like, being a, like being a teenager again, you know. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned probiotics. Did you know that we have literally pounds of bacteria in our bodies? Pounds. Thanks. Yes, I know that now, but mm -hmm. I, I still wasn't, I, I, I told her, I said, honestly, after trying to read through some of it, and I try not to be one of those patients, you know, that it's like I get all my info off the internet. I try to at least glean a little bit. It's a big field and there's a lot of different products out there. So even if you think this is something that you might need for your digestive health, I don't even know where you would start. So I was very thankful that she said, well, based on what you're telling me, go try this one first. Try it for a month. If you don't, you know, if you don't like it, you can move on to something else. But I needed a starting point. And that's where, again, a doctor who's a great listener and, and knows, a, you know, uh, a lot of things will steer you in the right direction, thankfully. Yes. <laughs> well, well said, Dr. That, that, that was your doctor voice right there. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's what we do. Interesting. Is there anything else I can yeah. help you with? No, I'm going to turn my attention to Greg now. Because Greg mentioned that, you know, Kristen Bry will be coming back to Asgos, Wisconsin after her maternity leave on January the 2th. And that, you know, she, she put up a, a post yesterday about being in some kind of an online poll, you know, another one of these best of Milwaukee yeah. type of things. Yeah, Milwaukee record. And she put up a very sweet, humble thing about, well, it's her uh, and some TV meteorologist down there, I guess. Mark Baden. And she says, well, you know, if, if I'm going to lose to him, that's fine because I trust him and like him. So, what? of course, what did I do? Right away, I'm online. I'm voting for Kristen. I'm committing wild voter fraud, pretending to be eight more people voting for Kristen. I mean, to be humble and kind and gracious when you're campaigning might be a new campaign tactic we want to try in this country. Maybe mm. being, being it, nice. <laughs> I mean, that's really like that's Kristen in a nutshell, too. When, so she won an award from Milwaukee Magazine for best radio personality this year. And yes. it was like two days. And then after that, if you mentioned it, she'd be like, please stop. Just please stop. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. Please, please. So now every once in a while, I'll just be like, so what's up? Magazine award winning radio personality. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sure she likes that very much. So it was it was nice of her to put that up. And yeah. Yeah. So did, do you remember what this new one is? I, I I think it's is it through Urban Milwaukee? So it's a it's a it's a website called Milwaukee Record run by my friend. Oh, Milwaukee Record. Yeah. Right. Tyler Moss and Matt Wild. Matt Wild's been on the show. Matt Wild is hilarious when he's on the show because mm -hmm. when you see him in real life, he doesn't speak. When he's on the show, he turns into some other like person. It's fantastic but they're doing like this bracket system like this person this milwaukee celebrity versus this milwaukee celebrity and then they move on in like a nc2a bracket thing or something i hear you saying though that you want to interfere with this election much in the same way that john oliver did with the puteki techie in new zealand yes, yes. you you do it yeah. out of out of you know both a sense of admiration and complete and total mischief yeah. and mm -hmm. that's that's what we we have going here that, like that actually is kind of the the underbelly of this show is, you know, chaos. admiration, <laughs> admiration, mischief, and chaos. Yes. What do you get out of this? In one word, that's what the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the three of us are: admiration, mischief, and chaos. There you go. Yeah, the ghosts of admiration, <laughs> mischief, and chaos past. <laughs> it's the worst Christmas Carol movie ever. <laughs> Uh, we're going to turn our attention to uh, weather and sports in a sec, and then we're going to pause and uh, ask Dr. Lyerly about, again, we talked yesterday about the 1849 law that is not an abortion ban. Well, the Sheboygan County District Attorney announced uh, yesterday after we were off air that he's going to appeal the ruling. So we'll talk to Kristen a bit more about you know what, what lies ahead there. Governor Evers also vetoed a ban on gender affirming care, something that's come up in hometown health. And Kristen will talk to us about that as well. Uh, so look for all of this coming up. But first, let me share some temperatures around the state at seven o'clock. Uh, Green Bay, you are at uh, 32 degrees right now. Lake Wasota is at 27, Hayward 22. Park Falls is 22, Wausau is at 31 degrees, La Crosse 33. Wisconsin Rapids is reporting 29 degrees at locally grown radio. Oshkosh is at 33, Madison 34, and Waukesha is at 32 degrees. And again, 
Warm-ups on the way, not here quite yet. Temperatures this morning still on par with what we had yesterday. But let's get the full details on that forecast live now from weatherology and meteorologist Jennifer Vuchitsky. Jennifer, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, well, like you said, warmer compared to yesterday as that warm front pushes through. We're looking at sunshine across the board today. Mid to upper 40s primarily warmer for parts of western Wisconsin. Avery and Baldwin down to Richland Center with highs getting into the low to mid 50s. Those three locations are also looking at potential, uh, potential for record highs today, so we'll be keeping our eye on those. Friday looks like partial sunshine expected from Milwaukee over towards Madison, then mostly sunny or a mix of clouds and sun for everyone else. Warmer for nearly everyone as, ev as well as that warm front fully pushes through, though a cold front directly behind that system starts to come in for west central Wisconsin, so starting to cool down around Amory and Baldwin. Highs in the mid to low 50s from Wisconsin Rapids through southern Wisconsin, mid to upper 40s from Wausau over towards west central Wisconsin, again as that cold front starts to come in. It does look like a chance for some rain coming in late tonight from Oshkosh to Richland Center and for southern Wisconsin, a mix of rain and snow for central Wisconsin, then dry tonight around Amory and Baldwin. Saturday to start off the weekend, it looks like a chance for rain and snow mixing around central and west central Wisconsin. Chance for rain from Oshkosh southward, primarily just for the morning hours. A drop in temperatures as that cold front really comes in for everyone. Mid to low 40s primarily, mid to upper 30s around Wausau, Baldwin, and Amory. Then on Sunday to round out the weekend, it looks like even cooler overall as that cold front fully pushes through. Mid to low 30s primarily, again, the coolest spots around Wausau and for west central Wisconsin with highs in the upper 20s, which will be a slightly below average for this time of the year, actually. Looks like sunshine expected for Madison and for west central Wisconsin and some cloud cover or, uh, from Oshkosh, Wausau and over towards uh, around uh, Wisconsin Rapids. Here's what I glean out of that. If you have not put up your holiday decorations yet, you have been given a reprieve by Mother Nature, a couple of days where you can get things up. And after that, if, you're, if your fingers fall off, don't, don't blame Jennifer and don't don't blame me. You've been warned. So get out there and, and ho, ho, ho it on the outdoors. Uh, Jennifer, thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. You do. All right. Uh, I, I, I don't know, honestly, where I got the ho, ho, ho it out. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Neither do I, Pat. And I would suggest never doing that again. I, I would just, I, it was that or, you know, jingle your bells or, you know, what whatever phrase just didn't get, didn't get, <laughs> just didn't. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are in the in-season tournament quarter or semifinals rather in Vegas against the Indiana Pacers. Tip-off is at 4 o'clock this afternoon uh, to, to find out if they will win the coveted and still really not named well NBA Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Marquette defeated Texas <laughs> Sorry. last night, 86 to 65. You people are terrible. Sit down over here. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're all going to pause for about 60 seconds and tell, tell you more when Up North News continues on this Thursday. Hey. Yes, this is our first time we've played holiday music as a bumper. Thank you for picking this one. Why am I picking this one? Because I wanted to start with the worst one of all and get it out of the way. Greg looks really? like I just put an arrow in his heart. I am. I'm going to throw this board out the window and end this show for good. I can't. Blasphemy, this song is amazing and it's beautiful. It makes me feel everything good. I, I'm not a. I don't. I don't have mastery of Yiddish, but I believe the word schlock is what I was looking for trying to describe this song. Who knew this song was so divisive? I just thought everybody agreed it was terrible. But I don't think I, it's terrible. Thank oh, you. Boy. Okay, well. Well, now I'm just it. tearing I'm it off because I want to protect no, it, it from your... No, I, no. I'm now in the... I'm now in the penalty box. Bring it up for 10 seconds. I'm going to shout for 10 seconds. <laughs> the choir of children sing their song. No, no, can't do it. No, it's just newsroom has uh, several promos that you can subscribe to from some of our favorite guests here. Mark Jacob has a weekly newsletter about right-wing extremism, exploiting weaknesses in journalism called Stop the Presses. Frontlines by Kia Vakil is a bi-weekly newsletter that gets you up to speed on local political stories you need to know from key states ahead of the 2024 election. Carolyn Fiddler has a must-read called State House Action. Kyle Tharp has a weekly newsletter that breaks down digital spending and so much more. Head over to couriernewsroom.com, sign up for those newsletters, and of course our own daily newsletter that you find at upnorthnewswi.com. Uh, 
Kristen Lyerly is back with us now. And again, if you weren't paying attention yesterday, a Dane County judge made a final ruling at the circuit court level that this 1849 law we've been talking about for well over a year now is not an abortion ban. It does not deal with consensual abortion. It is about uh, infanticide. And yet the Sheboygan County DA uh, said, well, that's not how I see it. So I'm, I'm going to appeal to which I thought, well, so much for the, you know, the law and order crowd. It's like, well, we'll, we'll decide what we think the law is going to be. So he's, he's going to appeal. Dr. Lyerly, what's your, uh, I suppose it's not a big surprise. No, I, I think we've always been thinking that this is going to make its way all the way up to the Supreme Court, but it sure was nice to see that declaratory judgment and to just know that this is the thing. Like we know this is the right thing. We know that this law applies to feticide. We know that this law does not apply to consensual abortion. So to see that it actually in on paper, it just uh, it was very satisfying. Well, because again, it, it, most people can read that and say, wait a minute, this doesn't appear to be what people were making it out to be. But you needed that clarity from the court. And I, I don't know anything about the, the makeup of which appeals court this would go to. But I'd have a, a, a unless you told me it was all filled with, you know, uh, Trump voting judges, I would have a hard time seeing this thing being overturned at the appellate level. Yes. And I think it's really important to note that for, while the appeal is pending, abortion is legal in Wisconsin. We had sought an injunction, which was not um, given to us, but we didn't need it because all of the parties agreed to abide by the judge's ruling. So if you walk away with no other information from this morning than this, abortion is legal in Wisconsin. If you need abortion care, if you have a complicated pregnancy, if you are suffering from a miscarriage, if you are seeking fertility care and you are concerned about what that looks like for you, it is safe for you to get the care that you need here in Wisconsin without criminal, criminal penalties. Physicians do not have to worry about criminal penalties. We can take care of our patients again. All right, but I'm gonna say something. And, okay. and it's something I don't th I don't think you're going to you're going to like it because you are you are working very hard to help people understand that abortion care is legal in Wisconsin and that these uh, DAs have said they will abide by it. And yet one of these same DAs has said that they're going to appeal. And again, abortion stays legal while while it's being appealed. But it just does not seem to me like even though they promise the judge they'll abide by it, that lacking an injunction um, whether it's you or some other provider, it, it would only take one DA and one rogue sheriff someplace to call, you know, for TV cameras and see you or somebody else being walked in handcuffs in for booking and processing, because that's the point that they want to make. And it's sad and it's cynical, but I just don't think the odds of that happening are zero. And I don't want that to dissuade anybody from getting the care they need. But I feel like I have to express that skepticism. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. And I think that that fear is very real. And certainly, uh, you know, D.A. Ermansky is presenting that way, saying that he does not agree with this ruling, but he has said that he will abide by it. So we have to trust, as physicians who are obligated to take care of our patients, we have to trust that the DAs will follow what currently is the law. So again, I know that you are skeptical, but I truly believe, and I believe that Judge Schlipper believes as well, that our DAs will not prosecute people who offer abortion care. And we want to encourage people. Abortions don't just happen in abortion clinics. So when Madison and Milwaukee opened back up a couple months ago, that was great. But abortions happen all over the state in hospitals and in clinics for people who are experiencing so many just, you know, really difficult individualized pregnancy situations. That's where we haven't been seeing abortion care happening. And that's where it needs to open back up again. And we need to reassure people who are out there practicing practicing and needing that care out there, that it is available, it is safe, and it is legal. That's exactly what people needed to hear. So thank you for that. Governor Tony Evers yesterday vetoed a, a, a bill sent to him by Republicans in the legislature that had a ban on gender affirming care. We've had a guest on in the past to, to talk a bit about that, Kristen. Again, not a surprise that the governor vetoed it, but again, some nice affirmation that this is what voters did when they chose Tony Evers to be in the governor's chair. 
Right. And they didn't actually choose this grossly gerrymandered legislature to make all of these very political decisions that actually harm people, harm young people and vulnerable people. Gender affirming care is health care. Gender affirming care validates what people are dealing with in their lives. And really, it is necessary for people to be able to talk with providers to understand what their options are and to receive the care that they need, whether it's counseling or medications or surgeries. It is necessary. And a ban, like a ban from these people, from these leaders who are against government interference, but they want the government to interfere with these vulnerable populations, come on. And then they use the guise of protection. It's not protection. It's protection when you allow people to make their own decisions about their own health care. So I'm incredibly pleased, not surprised at all by the governor's veto here and looking forward to much more of this in the future. Good. And one one more uh, news note that I wanted to share because it affects you in Green Bay. It affects us in the Chippewa Valley that Senator Tammy Baldwin announced that thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure law, five new proposed rail routes in Wisconsin have been selected as priorities and will each receive half a million dollars for planning and development grants to study this. Again, way overdue, way overdue. But rail service between Milwaukee up to Green Bay and then to the Twin Cities through the Chippewa Valley is once again one step closer. Isn't this exciting? Mm -hmm. When I talk with my kids about this, this is what they see as the future of transportation. They would love to have rail between Green Bay and Milwaukee. I think, you know, those of us who grew up in the generation where we grew up, and we're all just a little bit different, Pat and Greg and I, but, you know, we've, we are car people. We've got highways, but that's not how the future sees it. So to have the vision yeah. to do this, I think, is just incredible. And another place where Tammy Baldwin is really looking out for the people of Wisconsin. And one quick thank you to whoever just texted in from the Chippewa Valley saying, stay strong, Pat. That song is an auditory abomination. Thank you. <laughs> I, you didn't even see me send that text to myself. Your band. Health. We'll talk your band, caller. Your band. Coming up next. You're up north. <laughs> Time for Hometown Health and the people who care for us with compassion, with education, with skill um, of all types, uh, the, the doctors, the nurses, and many more. But today we're going to concentrate on the nurses. Uh, Dr. Lyerly is helping bring that into focus with some amazing people who are helping us find the next uh, generation of nurses and nurse educators. Kristen, the floor is yours. Well, thanks. I am thrilled to welcome some really, really important nurse educators who are here in Wisconsin working to increase the number of nurses we have, not only in our hospitals, but also training the nurses in our hospitals. Because we've been really, through, across the country, struggling with a nursing crisis. I talk a lot about the doctor shortage crisis, but really nursing is in a significant, a, a very similar situation. And so here in Wisconsin, we've discovered, we've invested in educating nurse educators in order to increase the number of nurses that we've got, you know, across the state. So I'm thrilled to welcome Linda Young, Dean Emerita Professor from the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, and Jill Gatormson, Dean at Marquette University College of Nursing. They are the co-chairs of the ANU Implementation Council for the Nurse Educator Program. Ladies, welcome. Yes, welcome, good morning. Thanks for having me. So I guess a good place to start would be help us understand what the nursing crisis looks like here in Wisconsin and what you've seen over the last couple of years. Is it trending in a positive direction? Is it trending in a negative direction? Where are we headed? Well, I'll take that first question. Thank you for asking it, Kristen. And I like the word that you use, crisis, because it is a crisis. We, we are shrinking our nurse workforce. People are leaving the profession. COVID had um, a lot to do with it in the short staffing now that healthcare organizations are experiencing and burnout. 
um, is a is an issue. Um, along with that, we have a severe shortage in the nurse faculty workforce. Uh, one of the hats that I wear is uh, the chair lead of the Wisconsin Center for Nursing nursing education and nursing faculty workforce survey. It's a required survey legislatively, along with the RN and LPN survey that helps us see uh, every two years where we're at with the number of nurses, those retiring, what the demographics look like, et cetera. Um, I wish I had good news to share, but I don't. We are down 300 nursing faculty uh, based on the most recent survey, which was just released last week. That's very significant when you're thinking about the fact that in Wisconsin, we have across all nursing programs, that's the graduate programs, four-year programs, two-year programs, and the one-year LPN program, we have about 1,100 nursing faculty. Add to that from what the data is showing that about 60% of those faculty plan to retire in the next nine years. So we are in a big deficit right now and we're looking to that deficit getting bigger. Um, so it, it's, it's an issue. So here in Wisconsin, just to emphasize what you said, because I think this number is really shocking. We are mm -hmm. down 300 nurse educators, the people who teach people how to be nurses. Is that right? That is, that's exactly right. And 200 of those 300 are full-time faculty. So when you think about that, our full-time faculty and their workload in teaching and, on a full-time basis is critical. Equally as critical are part-time faculty who can round out and are so instrumental in, in the education of our nursing students, and we rely on them heavily. Let's talk a little bit more about what a nurse educator is. I think many of us have contact with nurses when we go to the hospital or go to the clinic, but we don't, unless we are in the field, really have that kind of contact. So Jill, can you help us understand what is a nurse educator? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for the question. So a nurse educator is someone with deep clinical expertise in caring for patients across populations. Um, they typically have a master's degree or higher. They're really highly dedicated individuals who have committed their time and their energy to preparing nurses to support the health of our communities. Um, Linda's mentioned that um, we have a shortage of nurse educators and it really limits our ability to expand our nursing programs to meet the demand. Because of the vital, important, complex work nurses do, we really need to ensure that if we're increasing our numbers of students, we ensure we have high quality education that allows those nurses to come out and, come and work in this really complex healthcare world, particularly now. And we can't do that without expanding the number of nurse educators. And I thought maybe a little example um, of the scope of the number of educators you need to train nurses well. Um, much of nurse training is application of knowledge. It's experiential learning. So to give you an example in clinical, students in clinical or clinical simulation, typically those groups are eight students or less because they need really um, high focus, high attention from the clinical educators. And so each clinical group has one instructor assigned. So I'm sure you and your listeners can then do the math and see that as you expand, um, the numbers of students you're bringing into nursing programs, you really need to drastically expand your nurse educators to ensure that nurses are ready for practice when they come out. So what are we doing to expand the number of nurse educators here in Wisconsin? Linda, do you want to take that one? I sure do. I'm just so proud of Wisconsin and the work that we have done to to face this crisis and um, the emergency that we're in right now, right? So in 2013, uh, the UW system uh, uh, 
awarded a grant, uh, UW Eau Claire was the lead on that. It's called Nurses for Wisconsin. It's 3.2 million to grow nursing faculty with their doctoral degrees. So we had 54 awardees. So 54 added to the pot of doctorally prepared um, nurse faculty. Then we took that as a pilot and um, nurse education leadership around the state went to the legislators and said, we've got to do more. This worked for this small group. How can we have this work across the state? And so uh, in the last budget, uh, the Wisconsin Nurse Education Program uh, was passed with $5 million in the last the second year of that last budget. And of the 5 million, we had 104 awardees. So add that to the pot because we know it, it takes time to grow nurse educators. Now we are in a second phase of the Wisconsin Nurse Educator Program and the legislators and governor um, awarded the program 10 million. And we already have 158 awardees. There's great interest in this program. So my hope is this will continue because we will, over the nine years, we have almost 700 faculty positions we're gonna to need to fill from the retirements. And we are seeing separation now. Um, and so that's not accounted for in, in those numbers. So. Just a shout out to Wisconsin. I presented as a keynote speaker at a conference um, just on Monday to talk about use of data to solution. And I'm so proud of Wisconsin that we are moving in the right direction to address this crisis. Can, can I ask Jill, one of the things that uh, I certainly dealt with a lot as a, as a legislator, it comes up a lot, is um, any kind of bill in any industry regarding what's called scope of practice and talking about the duties that are done. And it doesn't take long to be in a clinical setting to understand that nurses, like other healthcare providers, uh, aren't just caregivers. They are uh, filling out documents. They have to know billing and coding. Uh, they they have to know uh, all, all sorts of procedures that are uh, tangentially related to patient care. Do you feel like along with attracting potential new nurses and educating them in healthcare, there are things about their their duties that either uh, too much is being put on them that should be, you know, with other people or, you know, where are your thoughts on how we need to change the day-to-day -day right. practice of nursing? Um, that's a really great question. Well, and I ask um, it because, right. you know, if you put too much on there, you get burnout and then you, yes. you, you hurt your own yes. cause. Yes. Um, it's a really great question. And I, um, we're so fortunate in Wisconsin. We have this amazing group of leaders in colleges of nursing that meet frequently and talk through these complex issues. And we have incredible leaders in the healthcare organizations that are working with us. So we understand the complexity that our nurses are facing in the healthcare environment. Um, I think helping nurses understand how to work really well with the healthcare team. And I'm gonna expand that based on your question, Pat, not just other healthcare providers, but working well throughout the healthcare organization as a team so that you can meet the needs of the patients yet not take on having to do everything all yourself. And so we spend a lot of time with our students, helping them understand that complexity, helping them understand who are the people that you'll be working with so that the work is shared and helping them understand how caring for themselves, because I wanna address the burnout issue, caring for themselves, how can they build resiliency so that they can have a sustained career in this career they've chosen and this career that they love. Um, and we need to be thinking about all of that right now. And because the world of healthcare is rapidly changing. And one of the things you need to do is help prepare students to be able to adapt to that change and even to be leaders within that change. And one of the hard things I think with burnout is when you have a shortage, those yep. few, that fewer number of nurses then has to take on more responsibilities, which makes their job more stressful, which contributes to the burnout. It's this vicious cycle. Yeah. So in order to interrupt that cycle, we've got to get more people into that, into those areas. 
Where it, a decade ago, this program started in Eau Claire. Where is it now? Is it all across the state? Are there specific schools where people can get involved here? Or how can people learn more about, in their regions, learn more about where the Wisconsin Nurse Educator Program is available? Thank you for that question as well. And I think I just saw the link um, put up to the website where you can go. There it is um, to find out more information. Yeah, and I'll let, her, I'll, let me interrupt. Let our radio listeners know it's nurseeducatorswi.com. Nurseeducatorswi.com. Go ahead, Linda. Sure. And this is for nurses all over Wisconsin. We and. Uh, the programs and nursing programs involved are those that have accredited nursing programs that are not for profit programs. So you can get your master's in nursing education at any of the Wisconsin nursing programs that offer that, that meet that criteria. Your DNP or PhD, again, any of the nursing programs across Wisconsin that meet that criteria. We also offer loan forgiveness uh, for new faculty hires. So if you're, you're applying to a two-year program um, as a nurse educator, uh, there are funds to help pay back loans. Um, and then we, we also are funding postdoc uh, fellows, a uh, small number of those, uh, which are individuals who are critically needed at our R1 institutions in our state. All right. Very good. Uh, Linda, Jill, thank you. I do want to pass along. We're not going to have time to answer it, but acknowledge that uh, Janet wrote in on Facebook asking, are the majority of people entering women? Are you reaching out to men to interest them in becoming nurses? It's a great career to have. And Janet concludes by saying thank you, as as we do as well. Uh, Linda Young, Janet uh, Tormson, thank you so much. Kristen, thank you. You stick around. Luke Mathers is going to be coming up in a bit. Uh, but uh, thanks again, Jill and Linda. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye now. Right. Uh, back with Luke Mathers coming up in just a bit. You're up north. There's something stuck up in the chimney and I don't know what it is, but it's been there all month long. I didn't know what Christmas song to play for Luke. I've never heard this song before. And you picked this nightmare? <laughs> oh, I answer it for you in the future. All I want for Christmas is a hippopotamus. Come on. Oh, oh God. I got to Was that written by Paul McCartney? Because it's kind of in that same category. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that would be. So you're not familiar with the, the Bob Rivers Christmas comedy album. Oh, I, I cannot recommend Who's that. Oh, thank this, you, Doctor Lyerly. Thank you. It was a com- right over Christmas my head. Com- it was a Christmas comedy album from thirty years ago. <laughs> from nineteen thirty. Sorry, excuse me. Hold on, let me get this in the live stream perfectly here. <laughs> comedy, <Emma>. comedy. <laughs> a great Christmas album. And- you whippersnappers don't know anything about Christmas comedy. <laughs> All right. Well, now you've asked for it. There's more. Of that- more you know, when I was world. younger, my Christmas songs included Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I just cranked up the phonograph and the sound came right out. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Mathers. Uh, How are uh, you this morning? <laughs> Better now that uh, I'm not the butt of the jokes uh, here on this appearance. <laughs> you know, really oh, Luke, just wait. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm aware, Greg. I know what the standard is for this segment, Apparently so that's what I'm you, saying. Better now, knowing that I'm not the butt to start. You, 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 you did not offend Paul McCartney like I did. Apparently, that was the crime that I committed. On did on he my take own it personally? Show. I don't care about Paul McCartney. Uh, no, but, but Greg me. And Kristen sure did. Oh, I offended oh. you because you like the terrible Christmas song. I am. We just don't think it's a bad Christmas song. Yeah, I mean, Luke, maybe that's what we need to know Luke, from our listeners: is what is the Paul worst McCartney? Christmas song? Chris, wonderful Christmas time. I, I don't think it's. I, I I'm agnostic to it. Uh, I, I don't have strong opinions. Someone went to college. <laughs> agnostic. <laughs> I, I, I it, it does not. Get, I'm not going to go to defend it. Uh, to like it seems like Greg is, and I'm not super against it like Pat is. Oh, so. look at here! It's Luke Switzerland Mathers on the on the line. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I have a hard time thinking that Paul McCartney's got any bad music out there. But oh, no, he that's does. just me. Um, Michelle, hello. <gasps> Worst Beatles song. There is one bad Beatles song. Oh, I like song, that song, too. Oh, come on, you two. <laughs> Seriously, I'm really worried about you both now. 
I, I do mean, I contend. Was, I was willing I, to go along with maybe you like that, but Michelle's where I draw the line. I do now contend I'm, that Paul I'm McCartney has never spent more than 12 minutes writing the lyrics to a song. <laughs> yes, mm. well, you know, all you need is a bar napkin, you know, and you put it on the back there. <laughs> um, maybe we should transition to what we brought Mr. Mathers on for, which was to talk about civic media. And here's my first question for you, and I hope I'm not stumping the band. The Milwaukee Bucks are in the semifinals of the in-season tournament. They're they're playing for <laughs> the wait, NBA wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, darn hey, it. and money, and money. And, There's and money. a minimum of a hundred k on the line now at this point. So they're they're going to walk away with each player and coach uh, for the four remaining teams uh, will be awarded at least a hundred thousand dollars. Which for uh, millionaire athletes would be a lot like you know offering well, Kristen. A, you know, did a, you a see Giannis's order. on-court interview after Tuesday night's game when the the reporter let him know that that's how much was a uh, guarantee? No. Giannis, Giannis's response was, oh, we're getting money. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Sounds good. And his response then was, well, the rich keep getting richer. So that was Giannis's <laughs> takeaway uh, from knowing that he's going to have at least a $100,000 check coming his way what, from their you know in-season I was performance. Impressed. I was impressed by him having a birthday yesterday, and he, uh, they were uh, posting on social media the, the scoreboard game, half a minute to win it, and you have to list off a bunch of things in 30 seconds. The and candies. Asked him this. <laughs> candies. He listed 31 different candies in 30 seconds. I was impressed. Yeah, That man uh, has a sweet tooth. I'm he surprised does. he doesn't look like me. Have I you know. seen when he discovered Oreos? One yeah. of my favorite no. Giannis content videos ever was when he discovered Oreos for the first time. Oh, he's uh, the best. And he got one of those giant glass ceramic like containers that you sometimes they're just for decor and you kind of put like different things in them. He like just started lining Oreos all the way through this glass. Like he had to have <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred plus Oreos in one container, and I'm sure you know with his diet he could probably. I was gonna say, do you know the, the number I want to know is the number of calories he burns on a typical oh. NBA game. I mean uh, that that it's got to be a lot. <laughs> yes, thank it, you. It, a it, lot. it is a lot. Uh, it's I, our I, medical I, definition there. Yep. So hey, I I'm not the nurse professional or the the, the doctor here. Like I I don't know those things. I just I speak in terms of a lot, a, lot, a little yeah. bit. So, getting, so getting the game. It's a four o'clock game against it Indiana is. in Vegas this afternoon. I would love so that. I would love I'm that. I'm wondering if you do you happen to know which civic media stations will be covering it? I guessed earlier, based on on previous things that said you. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't guess because maybe you have the answer. I, I do have the answer. So okay. five of our civic media affiliates across the network will be playing the box uh, with the pregame coverage starting at 3.30 this afternoon. So it is an earlier game, that tip-off starting at 4, uh, but going to be up in Park Falls and WCQM uh, in Amory, WLAK Lake Air, Oshkosh Air Supports, News from the Center, WRCE, and WRJN in Racine. So five of the Bucks affiliates going to be taking uh, the Bucks in-season semifinal game uh, starting 3.30 coverage, 4 p.m. tip-off this afternoon. For Thank the you. NBA oh, Cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for some great sound effect after the that. The inaugural NBA Cup, though. It'd be pretty cool if the Bucks can bring it home on the first, the first run at this whole thing. And how yeah. many Oreos do you think you could put in it? Oh, hey, that's a that great... would be an excellent question. That's a more I, I, question. I haven't seen it like in, in comparison. I think I've, the only it's been in all of those uh, NBA promos for Vegas. They kind of have it sitting on a blackjack table or a roulette table, and that's the the only the site that I've seen of it so far. So I'd have to see it side by side to Giannis to know how many Oreos we could truly put in the cup. So the it's question probably becomes... like a little tiny cup, like a chalice, <laughs> <laughs> the NBA cup. Yeah. The, the question becomes, I mean, did they think it was going to become as, as popular as the Stanley Cup and the World Cup? And I, I don't, well, you, you never know. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Or the Tri-Wizarding Cup. It's working, though. 
NBA viewership is up. The, the teams are competing harder, it seems, for this time of the year. Like, there are stakes on these games, and it, it's been a lot of fun to watch. As somebody that's been watching pretty much every single Bucks in-season tournament game, uh, it's been a lot, a lot of fun. And I, I think that they could go all the way and bring home the cup uh, in Vegas. Stop on, saying on it. Well, by Stop the way, one, one, <laughs> one last thing on that. The, the, the Bucks score the other night, 146-122. to 122. So when Joseph Pecky and others talked about how the Bucks won't have any defense anymore, getting rid of Drew Holiday, I think they were proven right. If, oh, yeah. If but it doesn't are, matter. If you could go put up 100, that's an all-star game number of offense almost. I know. So like, if they can do that on a, on a night-in, night-out basis. They I'm saying if they're defense. always going to give up 122, they'd better score 146. Yeah. And that Well, that be- was a season high for the year so far. So yeah. I don't know if they'll always score 146, but I think it's going to be more of a shootout rather than a uh, – boxing match of defenses gotcha all right thank you mr mathers thank you Kristen. thank you greg hope you all have a great day you too pat you guys are such good oh no (laughs) revenge is sweet patrick revenge is sweet have a great thursday see you tomorrow